My job there was to stay alive. When I got back, and it took me a long time to realize how brutalized you are, and that's the word I use. You are just brutalized. The shit that you, happens, the, how you behave, how people behave, it's, it, you can't grasp it. I, 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 I mean, I lived in a unit that had 12 people, and one of them was an officer, and one of them was me. And, and we didn't have any rules. There were no fucking rules. You just tried to stay alive. I, I, that was the deal. We didn't, I mean, there was no formations ever. Fuck, I mean, because you, you got incoming all the time. So you're up all night. You're up in the middle of the day. It just, I, I, you know, the part about the degradation of the land, uh, I, I, I really didn't care because I just was out. I just wanted out. My goal in Vietnam was to not get shot. So I did everything, that was my goal, not get shot. <sighs> so I got home and I called up Terry Lamb because the last thing I'd seen is he stuffed, he had, we had speakers and, you know, st Sam Sui and stuff like that. And so he stuffed his speakers full of pot and shipped them home and had me ship them. Why do I care? But, but so I, I did it. And then, you know, four or five months later, whenever I get home, I, I called him up. He goes like, oh, Mike, I'm glad you're home. Don't call again. Because we were Vietnam veterans, and that, would, that is about the worst thing you could be. There was no good thing that could come of telling anybody you're a veteran. There's no good thing about it. And lately, it's different now. But uh, it, it's, you know, it fucked up my kids' life for some reason. I, I mean, they, you know, you get biology. I, I it just, it's, and now, everybody's dead. Shit, we're all dying. We're dying at the same rate that World War II veterans are dying, and we're one generation younger than them.